Well, good morning. Welcome again to First Baptist Church for another service, this time in a slightly different direction, but it's still out in the parking lot, so uh, we're going to try this new direction this week to see how it goes. We've got more capacity this way. We're getting more and more people each Sunday. I can apologize for uh, anyone about a little rough earlier on, but we do need to keep uh, our uh, vigilance uh, up uh, with um, uh, our uh, social distancing and all. So uh, let's keep that in mind and uh, we'll uh, uh, get going. Welcome to all that are watching us on uh, Facebook and, and, and uh, YouTube. And uh, this is Communion Sunday. It's the first Sunday of the month. So if you haven't gone over to the uh, check-in tent and gotten your your uh, communion uh, cup and bread, please do that uh, um, soon. And we also have over there a uh, box. You can put your communion offering, that's a special white envelope that's in your bulletin, as well as your regular uh, yellow offerings into the uh, communion, uh, into the offering box over there. So uh, don't forget to do that. As usual, we have our uh, Wednesday uh, prayer at 6 a.m. We have the um, 2, uh, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Bible studies. There's a, a, a number of opportunities of recorded Sunday school and other opportunities on the Facebook and YouTube websites. I think that's the, most of the announcements that uh, I'll be making. So let us pray. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the music of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At your works of your hands I sing for joy. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. We just thank you, Lord, again for allowing us to, to come out on Sunday morning to, to fellowship together in in person. A number of our fellow American Baptist churches are still only live streaming at this point, Lord, and we know that, that, that this is a privilege to be able to, to come together in this, in this setting and, and worship you in this way. We just open our hearts, Lord. Open our minds. Open our souls. Open our spirits, Lord, so that, we'll, so that we are receptive to what you would have us hear and, and receive in the next hour or so. Once again, Lord, thank you again for allowing us to be here on this Sunday morning. In your son's name, amen.
Please be seated. Good morning, everybody. Our scripture lesson today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19, 19 to 20, and 20 through 27. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Verses 20 to 27. As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, these parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. As these parts are unpresentable, are treated with special modesty, while our presentable, presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and given greater honor to the parts that lack it. So there should be no division in the body, but it has this its part should be equally concerned from each other. No one part suffers. Every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with this. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of this. Blessed be the reading of the word. He is the everlasting God and he will help us at any given time of life. And I think when we're in the midst of the season, it seems like there's so much division. We have to remember that we have a covenant relationship with the living God, an eternal covenant. And we are covenant people. We shouldn't let temporal matters divide us when we have an everlasting and loving God. So let's join together as we sing, Strength will rise, our everlasting God. Upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we're, we got too fast. <laughs> I, it's, we want to be together, amen? amen? And this is probably new to you, so we'll slow it down. We got excited. You ever get excited? I do. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord.
focus as God's people is to focus on Jesus Christ, the one, the beautiful one, the very Son of God, sent to be our Savior. Trust in the power of God's love. We believe that God is love. And the power of his love is at work in us when we open our hearts and minds to be available to that work of God and presence of God.
thank you, God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit that you welcome us. Indeed, God, you have been at work in our lives from the moment that we were conceived until this day. We put our trust in your eternal love, your everlasting arms, your sufficient grace, your new and fresh mercy. We seek not only your presence, but we seek your will. We seek to practically live out the wisdom that you will give us if we open our hearts to your presence and to your word. And we make ourselves available. And we say, here I am, Lord. Here we are, Lord. We are your people. You are our God and we are your people. And all the people around this world are called, are invited, are welcome. But gracious God, we realize that not everyone responds. But here we are today. And we say, here we are, God. Your will be done in our lives. In these times, which are troubling times, gracious God, we rest our assurance upon who you are as our creator and redeemer, as the one who holds all things together, even when it seems that there are forces that seem to try to bring asunder and tear apart. Gracious God, may we be those who stand in the gap and choose to be peacemakers and choose to reconcile, choose to forgive, choose to love, choose to be kind, choose to go the extra mile, choose to love our enemy, choose to believe, choose thy kingdom first. Gracious God, may we be a people in this city who let your spirit shine within us and through us. Lord, we, we are but dust in some ways, but your spirit within us is eternal. And though the body we are given, as beautiful as it is, each one of us, is a great and beautiful treasure and a gift, we recognize ultimately it is the resurrection that is our hope. We, we are a resurrection people. We are a kingdom of God people. We are a people united in Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. And we thank you, God, that we can come together and lift up our hearts and our, our souls in praise and adoration and experience that never-ending measure of your love and mercy that keeps working in us, transforming us. Thank you, God. Lord, in the midst of this season where there is a vote this week, we pray for your help, your wisdom. Help us each seek the leading of our conscience. Oh Lord, may we recognize that freedom has been bought with a price and must be maintained with stewardship and responsibility. Oh gracious God, you do care about our day-to-day -day matters. You do care about our, our country and the countries of this world. So we pray for a work of your peace on this earth. And we do ask for your wisdom and help in every matter when it comes to our greater social contract as a people, as a nation. Oh, gracious God, uh, we put our trust ultimately that you never let go of us. You do care deeply for each one of us. And so that it is in Jesus' name and through his very prayer for us that we pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to do this here. I've been watching lots of people do this, and I thought, I want to do that one of these times. Here we go. All right. You know, it is an act of love and care to wear a mask. It is an act of love and respect and responsibility at this time in our earth to give each other a little space and to respect that God at times calls us to humility. At times God calls us to think about others before we think of ourselves and our own comfort. This passage today from Paul's letter to the Corinthians tells us that we're not just individual believers. We are the body of Christ. And not only that, we are in this world in relationship with the community of humanity. So the question is, how will we show love and respect to the world that we live in? And in our time, it's something as simple as wearing a mask and giving a little distance because God has made a very dynamic world that we live in with microorganisms that could be very powerful and with big things too. I mean, I'm gonna go into that in the message, but let's pray. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are calling us in this season to a love and respect that comes in our relationship with you toward one another. That you call us to reflect and even illumine your word, Lord Jesus, who you are in us as we listen, as we respond in love and care. Oh Lord, may your word speak to us today about who we are as the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, we just sang a wonderful old hymn, and it's called Great is Thy Faithfulness. Remember at the beginning of our service today? And something I'm going to do this month is I'm going to have a brief reflection about one of the great hymns of our faith. And great is thy faithfulness uh, comes from a man named Thomas Obadiah Chisholm. And he was uh, born in 1866. And he was from Kentucky, Franklin, Kentucky. Um, and he's, 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 not, he's someone who uh, wrote a lot of lyrics and who also worked with others toward finding melodies to the lyrics that he wrote. He was an insurance salesman. Many times people assume that all the people who write the great hymns of the church must be pastors or theologians or somebody who has all sorts of extra training, but he was a normal person who just, he, he, he was given a gift of writing poetry and lyrics. And he was reading Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 to 23, which goes like this, but as he found inspiration to write more. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Isn't that a great message? Just that... Everybody thinks it's bad news in Lamentations. There's good news. Even when we, we may grieve, God's mercy is new and fresh every day. So Thomas Obadiah Chisholm wrote these words, Great is thy faithfulness, based on Lamentations. And he had a conversion when he was 27 years old in 1893. He was at a revival in Franklin, Kentucky, led by Dr. Hen Henry Clay Morrison. This Dr. Henry Clay Morrison had been a Methodist mi minister for only one year. And then after a year, he had poor health. And it wasn't long afterward that he didn't live much longer. But just for that one year, Henry Clay Morrison preached the gospel and this man 
Thomas Obadiah Chisholm came to faith in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So Chisholm began working as a life insurance agent in Winona Lake in Vineland, New Jersey. And he wrote over 1,200 sacred poems over his lifetime. Among them, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which was submitted to William Runyon, who wrote the, work, wrote the, the melody and the score. And then it was shared to Moody Bible Institute in Chicago, and then shared around the world. Great is thy faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. The body is a temple for the Holy Spirit. We see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20 as Paul's writing to a metropolitan church. We're a very metropolitan urban church with great diversity in this city. And so was, this was true in Corinth as well. It was very diverse. People from all parts of the world lived in Corinth. And so with all that diversity, Paul understood, having been to this church before, he understood that they would have to find unity in Jesus Christ and maybe he could give them some things to think about but he also had to call them to holiness and righteousness because they needed to see their own bodies as a temple for the Holy Spirit there were all these other temples in Corinth a temple to this God a temple to that God and people at times got into things that were not good for their bodies and he had to call them to see that their own body was good. It was a temple for the Holy Spirit. At this time, and, and there was this philosophy that your body is bad and everything spiritual and mental is good. This Greek thought at times affected the way people worshiped and thought about their body. So Paul is saying your body is like a temple. It's the dwelling place for, for God to, to abide. Your body's a gift. Uh, and so he says, verse 19, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, Amen. whom you, ha you have received from God? Are you, you are not your own. God has made you and he wants to indwell who you are with his Holy Spirit. He wants you to have life and a relationship with him. And your body is that place where the Holy Spirit abides. So take good care of your body. Amen. Stewardship begins with who you are as a human being. You're made in the image of God in a spiritual sense and that God places his spirit upon you and something of your personality reflects that of divinity. We're, we're children. But we need to see the connectivity of life. You know, you can talk about eternal foundations, but you have to begin with who you are right now as a human being, the eminent. God calls us to a real, practical, living faith. He indwells our hearts and minds as we seek him, as we open our hearts to his Holy Spirit, as we listen to the word of God, as we let Jesus work in us, we experience something of the dwelling of God in us. I, mean, I hear amens, but you know, amen. Because how many times have you like started praying and all of a sudden a warmth comes over you? Amen. And not only are you, let's say, mentally aware, but there's something in your body that resonates the love of God. You experience the warmth of the love of God. Your body responds to the presence of God. Sometimes it's a matter of shaking or, or maybe sometimes it's a matter of comfort. But we are bodily people. The Holy Spirit comes within us. And when we experience that, there's many different ways that the Spirit can move and work. Comforting, encouraging, equipping, calming, giving us wisdom, helping us make decisions. Our bodies, our minds, our, our brains, our hands, our feet, all of who we are a part of this temple that God has made for each of us, that we can worship him. Ultimately, it's all about this.
Who do we give ultimate worth to? That's what worship is. Who do we give ultimate worth to? It is to our creator, redeemer, loving God in this relationship. And it's a dynamic relationship, right? I mean, every day you wake up, what do you say? I hope you don't say, oh no, another day. <laughs> Hopefully you say, thank you, Lord. I'm alive in this body. And before I take a step off this bed and step onto the floor, I'm putting my trust in you, God. I know you that you're with me, that you will never leave me. That you'll, I pray that you'll guide my steps and give me wisdom in this day. Let your spirit work. I give you my body. I give you my life. I pray for all these people. I start thinking of people you pray for, but you get started in your day. Your body is a sacred vessel given by God. And guess what? We were bought with a price. What does this mean? Paul is saying that the redemption of our bodies, the redemption of our souls, the redemption of who we are in becoming children of God, the work of God and his Holy Spirit is all a result of what God has done through his perfect love through Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross for us. He died to forgive us our sin. He died to reconcile us to God. He died to give his glory to us. And even though we don't deserve it, he reconciled us with the price. Something we couldn't pay. Something we could not, we could not do on our own, but we do come to him. And we find as we look at the cross, as we look at Jesus, as we look at him in the resurrection form, as we look at him, we find that we discover we are, we are part of that family of God. We are honored even though we didn't deserve it. He honored us even though we didn't deserve it. So we honor him because he is the head. Amen? Amen. We are to honor him. He is the head. He is the head of the church. He is here. He abides in your hearts. He is Lord. He is head over not only our lives, not only the church. He is Lord over all creation. And this is something a lot of people don't quite get, that God has placed him in this position of authority and things are still being worked out. But he is still, and he, he is Lord. So we are to honor God with our body and honor the Lord Jesus Christ with our body. Now let's consider the church as the body of Christ. And we see this in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 20 to 27. I love it how Paul draws upon this image of the body. He said, there's this unity with diversity as it is there are many parts, but one body. Have you sometimes examine different parts of your body? Of course you, you have. <laughs> I remember as a teenager, there was one morning I was, in, I was visiting my cousin Brian in Michigan and we were camping. And I, I, was, I woke up early, I started looking at my hand. I looked at all these little intricate things. I'm like, oh God, this, my hand is such an amazing thing. How did, you, how did you figure out how to make all this? And then looking at the veins and the all the, I mean, just everything about your hand. And it's funny because my uncle Ian was watching through the screen. He was watering the plants and he was watching me examine my hand. He said after, afterwards, he said, Scott, what were you doing looking at your hand? <laughs> now this, at this point, I was a believer. I had within the last, I was a senior in high school. And I said, well, Uncle Ian, I was just thanking God for my hand. And I, I thought, this is, this is such an amazing thing. And he, being a science teacher, said, you know, you're right. The hand is one of the most amazing things. You look at any part of your body and you realize how intricate and how interconnected each part is. I mean, you don't have to look far for evidence in the creator and loving God. 
Just look right with who you are. Just the fact you can think. Just the fact you have feelings. Just the fact that you have a conscience. Just the fact that we have interrelationships and we can come to understanding if we try. There, is, there are many parts, but one body. So it is with Christ and the church. Because there needs to be not only an understanding of this bigger unity and with diversity, there needs to be an understanding of mutuality. We must learn to respect one another and love one another and see that we work together. There's function. There needs to be respect in the matter of us working together. Here's what Paul says, verse 21 and 22. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, hey, I don't need you. Can you imagine? You wouldn't have made it to church. If we, if, if, how would we get anything done if we tell each other we don't need you? And this is true for how we look at people every day. There's no one that's expendable in the eyes of God. There's no one who should be treated with disrespect. We must show the kind of love of God that is respectful and lifts people up. On the contrary, Paul says, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Thank you, toenail. Thank you, elbow. Thank you, meniscus. What's a meniscus? If you have a basketball injury like I do, you find out what a meniscus is. It tore. And every so often, it did get repaired. The surgeon repaired it. But every so often, it, it reminds me of a time that I was playing basketball. And I went up and I blocked the shot. The guy stole the ball from me and I couldn't help myself. I had to chase him down the court. And I jumped up, I blocked the shot. And deep inside, the Lord said, okay, you can let go now. But I didn't listen. I held on longer because he wanted to get that shot up. I held on too long and he came down right on me and it hurt. I, had, I saw the surgeon. He fixed it. Thank, thank you, surgeon. Dr. Sandrock. Now that's an interesting name. But, but I learned, and it still speaks to me today every so often, that little meniscus reminding me, listen to God. If the voice of God speaks to you, respond to it and heed that voice. If somebody else speaks to you and has a concern, listen to them. Don't discount what another person may say to you because what they may have to say to you may help you and prevent something. Who's the meniscus here? I don't know. But maybe you, you have a voice and you have to say something. I have to tell you, my wife Marilyn's good at that. She'll pick things up and say, now you need to be concerned about this and that. And yes, dear, thank you. <laughs> well, all parts of the body are called to work together. We, we see here in verses 23 and 24 that we need to have humility and honor and modesty of importance. Here's what Paul says. And the parts we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. Well, our presentable parts need no special treatment. It's obvious that we look at each other's faces. That's a very presentable part of who we are. But, uh, you know, do we, do we, uh, I, you know, this is kind of a, here, this is always a tricky passage because like, what part do you talk about when you talk about unpresentable? I'll pick on something that's not too controversial and that is the underarm. The underarm, but it's important. Now, sometimes, you know, the underarm will be something nobody really wants to talk about except for your, if you're selling a deodorant. But the underarm helps to provide a means of heat escape and a way in which you can perspire and your body stays cool. If we didn't have that, we would get overheated. 
There, there are parts, and, and, you know, we try to hide it. I'll put, I'll put an antiperspirant on just to kind of make it look like I'm no sweat. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm cool. The fact is we need every part of the body. Amen? So even what we think might be an, uh, not an important thing is an, is an important thing. Every, every one of you here, every one of us here is important and loved by God. And together we are, through faith in Christ, as his people, the body of Christ. And that's when Paul goes further. He says, verses 24 to 26, that God has put the body together for mutual support to function together. He says, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. My friends, we live at a time that it seems as if the forces of political divide are trying to tear apart people of faith. That there are people who want to choose this side or that side and it ends up tearing people apart. When it comes to our faith in Jesus Christ, we shouldn't let these temporal matters divide us so deeply. We should have difference of opinion. That's just part of life. That's just part of understanding that there are different experiences and different understandings. That's okay. But we should never lose our equal concern for one another. We should never lose our compassion for one another. We should never lose our love and our and the matter of grace, but I, I, I've been watching the way people interact with one another on social media. This week we watched somebody react to something that was put up with, it was a poster of all these different people with masks, like health profession, professionals. And this one person reacted and said all these things, negative, why? We should have equal concern for one another. If one part suffers with COVID, all parts suffer. If one part is honored for doing something heroic to fight this pandemic, it's something we all can rejoice in. We are called to be united, not divided. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, shit. Six people. Amen. Amen. In verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. Do we hear this? Who are we? People. Body of Christ. The body we are people. Of Christ. The body but we are the body of Christ. Let's say it together. We are the body of Christ. Amen? That means that you belong. We belong. You and I belong to something greater than our individual selves. Not only are we part of the human race that God has made, but in Christ, we are the body of Christ. We are, in other images, we are the bride of Christ. We are loved. We belong. Because God has so loved us. God has even given his son to make us right, forgive us, and keep working in us. What God has begun in you, what Jesus has begun in you, he will complete. And so we are united in this hope. We are united so that we can care for one another. So remember, your body is a temple. It's sacred. And remember that we are the body of Christ Amen. and we are called to honor God both individually as the people of God as all, and together as the church within the society we live in as witnesses sharing the love, grace, truth, mercy of God through Jesus Christ.
Let's take a moment to pray. God, we thank you that you call us to be good stewards of this body each one of us are given. May we consider in our lives ways that we can take better care of these bodies that you've given us, which are designed to be temples for your Holy Spirit. Oh, gracious God, we also pray that we will be caring stewards of what it means to be the body of Christ, that we will honor one another, encourage one another, be patient with one another. Lord, that we will respect one another, encourage one another, that we can grow together, honor you and serve you together. We thank you, God, that in spite of all the division and all that's going on in our world, there's something greater. And in this dynamic world, in this dynamic universe, you hold things together. Even our own bodies are an example of how things are held together. Oh, gracious God, we put our trust in you, the everlasting God. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 and following. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives.
the cross is a reminder. The cross is a reminder of how Jesus took upon himself our sins. I'm sure you've heard it before, but there is a vertical sense in which our relationship with God was reconciled. But there was also something on a horizontal level, our relationship with one another, our sins that we've committed to others are forgiven through Jesus Christ. Not only that which we've done, which is a sin before God, but that which we have done to others or even ourselves. Jesus lifted up the bread. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Jesus lifted up the cup, said, This cup represents the new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Let us drink all of us in remembrance of Jesus who gave his life completely for us. Let us drink together. together we're going to sing a, a nice simple chorus called we are one in the bond of love we're going to sing it several times let's stand together as we sing first we refrain from joining hands it'd be lovely to do that but we're going to wait till god's timing with the grace of God and Jesus Christ. And all God's people together as the body of Christ said, Amen. Amen.